That's pretty obvious. So, one more from Brevity, I think, and then I'll do another one for myself. Let's see, we have... What is this one? They're all such pleasant surprises. I mean, I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. This is actually really cool. All right, so we're going to have next match here, which is going to be... Oops, I've got to be locked on for first. All right, Brevity is older with Claude as Ashka against Dagger1337 or Dagger Elite as Gunner or as Jade. Old Bloodline Champions names coming out there. And Super Strode as Croak. So we actually are kind of seeing not quite the opposite of the last game. But we are seeing the same composition on red team, while blue team going for a much less aggressive composition. Much more of a, I mean, Brevity is, as playing older, older is a character who's basically about just setting up crowd control situations, or at least crowd damage situations. And actually is trying to go for more crowd control, setting up more time benders, probably going to try to pick up snipes from Dagger Elite. I mean, given the composition here, that's what you want to do. Pick up a snipe, and then fire back, hitting both. So we should be seeing time bitters coming out when snipes come out. And yes, we see actually Dagger Elite playing around that, trying to make sure that the snipe is available only when time bender's not. And that didn't quite work. Actually, Dagger Elite being focused down to the point that it's not even gonna matter. They're playing a round of Brevity's time bender is not gonna make a difference. And Claude finishing him off while Brevity trying to avoid cr the croak there. And nice stun on the croak. Keeping themselves alive. Jade Jade has to be handled stealthily, and unfortunately was not handled stealthily enough. I mean, in this setup, with this composition, it's not as important as the double melee setup. But when you have, like, Freya Rook, that's a big difference from having Croak and Older. Oh, sorry, Croak and Pyro. Not, sorry, Croak and Ashka, not Croak and Older. Sorry. Ashka and Older. Let's get his traits. I'm not colorblind, I swear. Anyway... We, yeah, I mean, Superstro doing a pretty decent job getting out of there. It's just that they're gonna have to get their ultimate up in order to get the damage they need, or they're gonna need to do an incapacitate. If they did EX camouflage, incapacitated Brevity, and then try to take out the Ashka player, try to take out Claude, that might have worked. Incapacitate is very useful that way. That makes a 1v2 into a 1v1. Always worth using. And now I'm curious what we're gonna see. I'm guessing. Guessing blue team is going to be fairly aggressive, and yeah, it looks like Claude just going for more and more crowd control. Yeah, it's trying to keep everything separated. Not sure what... Okay, it looks like Snipe for Dagger Lee. They really just want to go aggressive, while Superstroke much more focused on staying alive, which makes sense. They are further up. Brevity increasing their healing power. So Brevity's still focusing a bit more on the support aspect, less on the aggression aspect. Older is very powerful as an aggressive hero in a 2v2 situation. But that's not the focus right now. And no time bender! Brevity did not go for the time bender for the snipe coming in, did not react to that, sadly. And at this point, that didn't actually matter a huge amount. The healing was able to make up for it, but even then, that would have been a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage on the table. And Dagger Elite able to get some nice snipes off there. And we Dagger Elite did go for the snipe cooldown reduction as well, so that's going to be even more snipes coming in. More opportunities to catch them, but they're all going for Ashka. Because, of course, they would. And that was nice. We saw the EX snipe there. That was snapshot with the root and everything. Not as useful against ranged heroes. That's actually one of those things that's far more useful against older, despite the risks. Like, it's one of those things you have to watch. Does older have time bender ready? Has, have they used it recently? And actually, they have. But not anymore. It's available now. It's long since become available. We can double check. It's... Oops. Yeah, right there. Totally available. And it, once again... We have a situation where Super Strode on their own. The red team not really focusing down either of the blue team members. I mean, I realize it's very risky to focus down older. You don't really want to do that, but at the same time, older has so many options for crowd control. I mean, they have the Sands of Time, which just adds the amount of damage, especially when they're throwing out when they're throwing out quicksand. And that's messing with your movement. When you're dealing with two heroes that are focused so heavily on movement, and there's an ability that's completely restricting it. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem. So Brevity continuing to go for the defense. Doesn't want to waste any time. Doesn't want to waste any chances. M wants to make sure that 
even though they're winning right now, they're figuring the red team will probably start to catch on. That's what it looks like anyway. And nice stun there. Ooh, missed, but that would have been a good hit. That would have been a good stun. Brevity did not go for their time bender there. Actually, not really focusing on that. It looks like Brevity with the time with no time benders. Actually getting stunned out by a snipe, while at the same time, looks like Claude is going to be completely torn apart. Superstrode, very good at dealing with Claude. Just on their own. And Claude about to go down. Superstrode might want to work quickly, though, because that's... A lot of ultimate damage coming in. Not enough, though. I think Red Team is pretty much taking this match. Unfortunately, Dagger Leap has been missing their snipes, but that's probably fine. Should see an ultimate coming in. Gonna probably try to stun both if possible. And that time bender caught. Did not catch a snipe. Which kind of sucks. And Roots. Okay, snapshot coming in there. I feel like that was a lag thing. I don't feel like that was a bad reaction. I feel like that was just firing off snapshot when it felt like it would have been a good idea, and then. Older went away from... I don't know. Older was already out of the way. That was weird. Worked out, though, regardless. Superstro definitely taking that match. I feel like Dagger... Dagger Lee doing a decent job. Did get a few good snipes. Missed a few good snipes. And... It seems like, really, it works really well to split up. Like, for Red Team, splitting up is going to be very effective. They're both heroes that work well. They have lots of... Well, not a huge amount of burst damage for Superstro. It's more of a delayed burst. But does have stun into lots of attacks, so it has the stun combo there for the camouflage. And Dagger Elite has a lot of burst damage. So extra energy for Claude and Dagger Elite want to probably be able to just use EX moves after ultimates, which I love doing. While Brevity continuing with their pattern of support-based play, and looks like Tubastrode no longer able to use healing battle rights, focused much more on crowd control now. Or as much as they can. I mean, it's only so much they can do. But then again, Croak is a pretty good crowd control hero as a melee hero. That's kind of what Croak does. Like, between the two different camouflages. Although I kind of... I mean, once again, we have a split up here, and we did see already that's advantageous for the red team. Red team wants to keep blue team apart because, for one thing, you know, you have a healer here, so you want to keep the non-healer away from the healer, and the healer away from anyone they could heal. But at the same time, this is not a great matchup. Older versus Jade... But the older that's time bendering whenever they need to. That time bender was used up though. So Jade baited that out properly. But when the older has time bender, the Jade is not playing around time bender very carefully. That's a terrible matchup for Jade. Or at least it's probably 6 4. It's a difficult matchup. It's not terrible, but it is. I would say older has the advantage. However, Croak versus Ashka. Not really sure. This Croak versus this Ashka though. Definitely this Croak. And at this point, Daggerly looks like they're about to go down. Claude, however, has gone down. But we do have a snipe out here, and that snipe hit. Perfect hit, too. And ultimate coming out here will be able to take care of Daggerly. But Superstrode coming in with a nice camouflage. That was tough. I don't know if there was an easy way. I don't think Brevity had their time better up in time. They had just recast it, but... I'm might have actually been off cooldown. Now that I think about it. A little unfortunate, but that would have been an on-reaction thing, or just realizing, wait a sec, Superstro is not visible. They're camouflaged. They're going to stun me out and kill me. Then time bender that. But that's really hard to do. So I can see that wouldn't have happened. And it looks like Red Team going for the defensive options on their ultimates. As is Blue Team, actually. Everyone going for... Actually, no, not, not Claude. Oh, never mind. Claude is going for the offensive option. Yeah. Sorry, defensive option. Should make sense. And just got the M1 there. Didn't get the snipe. So the time bender didn't quite work out as well as it could have. And a snipe. Missing. Oh, nice. Firewall there. Perfect timing on that. Stop the sniper coming in because that's what it does. It blocks projectiles. Very intelligent on that. And it looks like red team, they do have center control. They are going to be able to get control... Ooh, that's an energy ore for blue team. Are they losing center control? Looks like they might be. Good Petrify coming in from Brevity, but that... Or no, it wasn't Brevity. Sorry, that was Claude. This is one of his escape abilities, the EX version of it. Blue team with center control and getting some extra healing. Blue team with a lot of health. Red team, no healing, no healers, and no access to healing orbs. 
their only real option is good ultimates. Like, this... That was about it. That was the only chance they really had. It's a nice shot there. I mean, Dagger Lee did have a good shot. Good, good option there. But unfortunately, did not quite manage to hit with the ultimate. Does have more energy, though, and it looks like... I don't know. I think that Claude... If they remain safe, they're a ranged player, so they don't have to get in trouble. But they are going to go down, taken out by Super Stroke. Another ultimate fire off by Dagger Lead, and Good Time Bender will save this, but unfortunately, Older couldn't really do that without baiting it out and getting a snipe, and that wins it for the red team. Really tough situation I mean, for Brevity right there. Time Bender wasn't the best option, and they kind of used up their other escape options in general. That wasn't a great situation to be in. But still worked out. Very close match. Very entertaining to watch. But yeah, that was basically a win because that's... That was a win pretty much on account of splitting up. That's what it came down to. Like, the entire thing there was blue team split up and red team took advantage of it. Because you're dealing with characters that are entirely about stealth and about burst damage. Well, not so much burst damage, but still about stealth and about just a, well, a lot of damage. Like, dealing enough damage in a short enough span of time that it just kills you. That's it. You're done. I think one more from Brevity, and then I'm not sure if I'm going to keep going. I might. Probably will. All right. Ooh, we got to see an Iva. Iva's a cool hero. That's Zykor playing Iva, Brevity playing Croak, with Wumbo playing Taya, and Breeziar playing Jade. Wow, this is going to be interesting. So basically, we have on both sides one more direct damage focused hero and one more stealth focused hero. Oops. Although, Brevity does have a bit more crowd control working for them. I mean, both Brevity and Zykor have a bit more in the way of crowd control. Breezy has a bit more... F I mean, Breezy has Disabling Shot, obviously. Wumbo, did they go for the Stun Battle Royale? We don't know. If they go for the Stun in the Wall Battle Royale for Wind Strike, then that would give them a decent amount of crowd control, but I don't know if they're going to go for that. Against this composition? No, instead they're going for extra speed. And... Looks like Breezy are going for... Immaterial on stealth. Meterless immaterials. I'm not surprised given this composition. They want to make sure that Crow can't hit them. That's the biggest thing. And stealth into snipe. Just missing the Ivy player. Zykor, very good timing on that, that little jump there. Didn't manage to oil anybody though. So a little unfortunate. But still, that avoided a snipe. So that's worth it. That's the that's his own reward. And a miss on the snipe. That was a weird miss. I've noticed Iva has some weird hitboxes, but yeah, that was a bizarre miss. I did not expect that. Brevity taking the center orb, and that just about gives Zykor enough for an ultimate, but going for one of their EX moves instead. Getting that shield, and actually needing to heal up quite a bit. Only one health orb available, though, so this... Iva's going to be out of the fight for a while, or rather, Zykor's going to be out of the fight for a little while. Being a ranged hero, not a big deal, but against a double ranged team, it is a bit of a big deal. Ty is out of play, and... Okay, Breezy trying to avoid getting hit, which makes a lot of sense, but does get hit by Zykor's ultimate. Wow, stealth too, which kind of sucks. Unfortunately, well, unfortunately for Zykor, one more getting missed. One more really taking advantage of that speed. Really take it's the haste cool. Oh, actually, it's haste increases ally movement speed, but still trying to get away as much as possible. Why did they win? Okay, why did they win bomb there? I guess they didn't see Brevity. They must have assumed Brevity had gone stealth and was about to hit them. Which kind of makes sense for what they were planning on doing. And now Brevity gone stealth. Incapaz stayed up. Into... Yeah, into death. Not sure why they went for the EX, though. Incapacitate when you only have one enemy doesn't make a huge amount of sense to me. But it worked out anyway. But yeah, very good start for the blue team. I think Red Team is probably going to be focusing down Zykor hard. I mean, Brevity was doing a decent amount of work, but Zykor did more damage and was just generally 
being a bigger pest. And it looks like we're going to see a lot of stealth coming in from Breezy R. A lot of stealth. And at the same time, that's also true for Brevity. So stealth here is focusing on stealth and the other two focusing harder on crowd control. Although Rocket X7 is more just extra damage once you hit oil. So Jade versus... Okay, so if double 1v1 happening here. Zykor getting hit by that stun. Finally! Finally, Breezy Arm sure feels really good about hitting that snipe. Really needed that. But the thing is, because of the battle rights that Wumbo's chosen, Breezy R is... I mean, in general, you want to stay together. But especially because of the haste battle right there. Breezy R wants to make sure that they're relatively close. Because they want to be able to pre-position well. And Zykor is still just being a pain. And another incapacity coming in here. It looks like Wumbo is going to be completely focused down and... Com that's it. Wumbo's down. Breezy R... They're going to be super careful. Snipe, which... Nice hit! Got Zykor. Oh, not quite finishing off Zykor. Very well-timed shield from Zykor there to avoid that shot. That was pretty much it. That's going to finish the game. Yep, that's it. That Venom's going to go off. And with that, blue team takes round two. So I'm a bit surprised that Zykor was not focused. That double 1v1 really helped out blue team a lot. Because Zykor is playing a hero that's much better direct damage than Breezy Like. Jade is great at burst damage. Does a lot just if you don't they don't know they're there, it's just hit you and dead. But I was just there to deal a lot of direct damage. Especially if they can combo the oil, which hasn't happened yet, but if they can, that's even more direct damage. And also there's a counter on top of that as well, which Jade does not have. So Wumbo going for extra healing. Jade going for Ooh. Breezy are going for a Blast Vault, so really wants to just escape. I'm curious if they're going to try to go for another one, double 1v1. Like I said, Red Team does not want that, but at the same time, Breezy R is splitting up a lot. Like, it's not so much that Red Team is getting forced apart, it's that Breezy R keeps trying to snipe people out. I mean, Zykor taking a bit more of the heat here. Taking quite a bit of damage, too. Nice counter, they're putting the shield on what they need and red team getting the center orb but still red team not taking a huge amount of damage pretty much no damage has been dealt to brevity so far zykor has taken the brunt of it but at the same time brevity has basically dealt back what they've taken so at this way wombo's out of the fight breezy R needs to be very careful how they set up nice disabling shot there but unfortunately does not miss or does not hit with a snipe and one last ditch ultimate coming in for wombo and breezy R. Manages to survive long enough thanks to the ultimate, while... Oh, sorry, Breezy R kills. Wombo survives thanks to the ultimate. Breezy R manages to get rid of Iva. Manages to get rid of Zykor. And Brevity trying to camouflage out of things, but got wind bombed. That Vortex Battle Rate... Actually, I think the Vortex Battle Rate won the game. They kept Brevity in place just long enough for Wombo to hit that one boomerang. That did it. So red team on the board. Let's see what happens now. I mean, I did see quite a few X-Rays coming on. That probably helped Wumbo a fair bit, especially near the... I mean, that ultimate, that didn't account for most of that health healed. And Zykor realizing, I'm getting focused down. I should probably go for extra healing. Well, both of Red Team going for broke. Wants to get the enemies down and then kill them when they're down. We'll see how that goes. I mean, unfortunately, right off the bat, Breezy are not doing too hot. But at the same time, it looks like... We are seeing focus down on Zykor, and that's exactly where it should be. Nice! Oh, got the oil! No, didn't quite get the oil off. I don't think. It's a bit hard to tell. The status effects only show one. Doesn't show all the status effects at once, but Breezy R is getting hit hard. Avoiding the ultimate, so that ultimate was empty. Breezy R spaced out of the way, right at the right time. And nice spell block there, too. Breezy R does not have the healing on spell block, though. So this is all the health I'll have unless they go for the... Ah, they uh, didn't go for the orbs. And we aren't seeing... Well, actually quite a lot of good coming out of Wumbo. And there's the ultimate. I was waiting for that. Wondering when the Razor Boomerang is going to come out. Well, the Ram Razor Boomerang. Unfortunately, not hitting any of them. Blue team getting out of there after taking the center orb. So ultimate coming in, and that's game. Blue team takes it. Thanks to ultimate coming in from Brevity.
which that's really been winning a lot. Like Croak pretty much relies on that. That's Croak's burst damage is ultimate. Doesn't rely as much. Like, relies on EX camouflage a decent amount for dealing with one on two fights, but otherwise meter just goes to ultimate to get that burst damage and take matches. That's pretty much how Croak has been played so far. I imagine as time goes on, more usefully found for the for all the EX moves. But yeah, you just see pretty much every Croak building up to ultimate. That's the entirety of what they do. Anyway, I think I'm going to have one more match tonight, which is going to be... I think that's all the ones Brevity gave me. Yeah, that's all four of them. So, I'm going to be doing one of mine, which is... One of the last ones I played for research the other day. Right, so... Shadow Fury is playing Varish with GLHF playing Paloma. Very interesting mix. Very keep away. I mean, very control focused too, but mostly just keep away. While Slapped going for Croak and Bones going for Taya. So Red Team, off the bat, probably going to be much more aggressive. We're probably going to see Red Team trying to set up, essentially... Probably focusing down Paloma. Probably focusing down GLHF. Paloma's a very scary opponent. Mind you, both Paloma and Barish are scary to fight against. But Paloma's usually the one you focus on because Paloma can pull people out of the fight to a, like pretty much anyone becomes immaterial any time. And, of course, healing. Like, there's the other side right there that makes immaterial. That's hugely important. I mean, pretty much what Shadow is going to be doing is entirely just setting up combos. Because Varesh's main thing is both the blue bar and the purple bar, hit both of them, and then, or hit, well, each of them has an additional effect. The blue one decreases damage dealt and healing received, and the red one increases damage received, or the purple one, rather, increases damage received, and there's some moves that consume it, dealing extra damage as a result. But yeah, at this point, Shadow Fury taking an early kit, early death, and a couple ultimates coming in, that's going to be it for Red Team, taking an early lead off of an aggressive start, which is exactly what they needed to do. I mean... Of course they would, given the composition. Focusing down Shadow Fury, who was a bit too aggressive in that match. Trying to go for the center, but with Varish, it's a bit tricky to do that. Varish does have a shield. That's about it. There's not much else. Like, has a shield, has a counter. But the shield was used right away. And the counter wasn't really used all that much. So, Ghost Wolf is the focus for GLHF. Really wants to keep that Ghost Wolf going. As mo basically, it looks like as a mobility reduction system. As for Red Team, they're going for heavily aggressive battle right choices. All the additional damage. Whereas Shed, if you're going for the area damage on hit with ju Hand of Judgment, which is kind of handy. Useful if your opponents are standing together. In this, it's a bit of an odd choice because the two Red Team members are occasionally standing together, so it does work sometimes. But there is a Croak, and Croaks typically go a bit lone wolf. Still, blue team has taken the center. Did not get the hit, though. That counter... I mean, especially for having taken the counter battle right as well. Now, Paloma versus Croak. Paloma with the ultimate up. This is going to be very close. Both players have their ultimates. Paloma's ultimate, of course, is healing. So that rather reduces the impact of the Croak ultimate. Slapped basically even again with GLHF after GLHF heals. GLHF not picking up the energy orb there, dropped by Shadow Fury though. Very important to do that. Whenever someone dies and Sam, okay, there we go. Slap picking up their teammate's energy orb. GLHF not picking it up. And Shadow Fury actually pointed that out. I did point that out. It was a thing, but it works out. Ultimate on both sides and another ultimate cast from GLHF, basically saving them from the venom and allowing them to win. Like that ultimate basically did their game because that was what they needed. And Paloma's ultimate heals immediately, and then heals again whoever's inside the circle. So that initial healing, that was what was needed to survive. Slap did a good job avoiding it, though. Like, Paloma's ultimate is something you have to be mindful of, because it's just, there's an area, it's one of those area denial abilities. That's what you do. You set it up, you can't do anything other than that. Like, get away from there. That's all you can do. So Shadow Fury going for all the counters, despite having not actually gotten a counter off so far. Bones going very heavily for X-Strike, and Slapped going for healing. Not quite so confident anymore, apparently, or at least... I mean, given the last match, given how the last one ended where healing basically won the day, I'm not surprised. 
Although, admittedly, that's also healing on the space bar attack, which works decently well. No counter there, though, and basically relying entirely on Paloma Panics. Blue team is relying entirely on Paloma at this point. Chatterfear, however, managing to stay alive. Not managing to protect GLHF, though, and GLHF about to go down. Needs to avoid the fight. Unfortunately, it does go down, and Shadow Fury pretty much on their own. Not a whole lot they can do right now. I mean, good counters will help, and ooh, that did not work. Was that? I think it was a timing thing. It looked like the counter was just over. Which kind of sucks, because hitting counter twice is pretty much what that build was about. Didn't work out, though, so Red Team takes round three. That was a game... That round was decided by splitting up. As always, splitting up, especially with this composition, I mean, GLHF had to split up. It's more so that Shadow Fury didn't really protect GLHF as well as possible. Slapped and Bones pretty much focused down Paloma, because that's what you do. Like, you focus down the healer. That's what you do. It's... The healer provides survivability. And we've already seen GLHF knows what they're doing quite well, so... Yeah, keep GLHF alive and you could lose the game. And at this point, a bit more aggression coming in from blue team. Red team, Shadow Fury going for getting the status effects to trigger each other. Basically keeping them up as long as possible, which is a good... It's, I find really good. I, I don't... I imagine there's a lot of use for the other round four battle rights, but that's the one I find is most useful. The other two are basically just like extra energy. I think it's extra energy and extra health. or I think it's Aegis and Focus or whatever is that gets you extra energy. I'm not entirely sure. That... No, that an extra charge. I have to double check. That's what I mean. That battle rate is so good, it's hard to remember what the other two at that round do. Because just having corruption and judgment on a character at the same time is so useful. The extra damage you deal plus the damage they don't deal as a result, and having either ability, having your super fast M1 continue keeping those things up is extremely useful. And at this point, blue team basically winning because able to deal all that extra damage. Focusing down Bones, Faller. Yeah, Bones followed by Slapped. Like, I've found in general, once Varish gets to round four and if picking up Synergy, that's basically going to turn things around. If nothing else does, that'll turn things around. Just getting those status effects on there. Because that's what... That is Varish's thing. Getting those status effects and either consuming them or using them to deal additional damage and keep yourself alive. And at this point, looks like defensive choice for Slapped, offensive choice for Bones, but honestly, we've only seen, I think, one ultimate, or no, like two or three ultimate casts from either team. Well, certainly from red team. Blue team is a bit more. Round two. Round two is all but ultimates. Round three and four haven't really featured too many ultimate casts. Let's see what happens in round five, and nice extra egg there, and that's healing, right? No, no healing. That's extra damage. Bones did not go for healing on the X strike. Got panicked during the ultimate. Nice timing from GLHF there. GLHF unfortunately taking a lot of damage. Should be shielded. Nice other side. There's the shield. Good other side from GLHF. Good shield from Shadow Fury. A little bit late, but it worked out. And now ultimate coming up for Shadow Fury. All about that extra status. And this is going to be risky. One good E from Shadow Fury should be able to make this match. Actually, one good attack. And it looks like Bones needs to find healing. Blind fire there. Shadow Fury did not have sight of that. Blind fire for the win. Just guessing at the position. Bones being just a bit too predictable. And that does it in. Blind shot for the win. So I think that's going to be it for this. I, I don't know why you didn't let me leave the game. I think that's going to be it for me tonight. So I hope you enjoyed that. My inaugural Battle Right spectated replay commentary. If you have any replays you want to see commentated, please let me know, like either Dropbox or if you have other means. There are several ways of sharing files. Dropbox I simply find to be the most reliable, but whatever you like. If you want, let me know. I'd be happy to cast them. Any suggestions for how to improve, please let me know. And hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching and have a good night, everyone.